Hi everyone. <clears throat> so in this video, I'm going to continue discussing the concept of Hess's law and uh, work through an example to show you how we apply this concept. So uh, in the previous video, I talked about this idea that you can basically take, um, <clears throat> if you can find a way to take a set of reactants to a set of products uh, for a particular reaction that you're interested in calculating the delta H of, if you can find a number of reactions that somehow when added up together would give you the um, products, then you basically can calculate the delta H for that particular reaction. And this is what we refer to as the Hess's law concept. Now, uh, in particular, when you're applying Hess's law, there's certain mathematical manipulation that you'll be performing on the chemical equations that you have. And so uh, you need to think about, uh, you know, how you're going to manipulate the chemical equations. Maybe you need to multiply it. Maybe you need to divide it. Maybe you need to reverse it and so on. So uh, each one of those manipulation steps, mathematical manipulation, has an effect on the value of the delta H uh, that's associated with that reaction. So when you take a reaction and you multiply by an, uh, you multiply the reaction by a number, for example n, then the value of the delta H of that reaction is also multiplied by the number n. Uh, if you reverse a reaction, then the value of the delta H is then multiplied by negative one. And when you add reactions together, then the delta H values are also added together. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the, the, the three different uh, manipulations that we'll see uh, a lot in, in, you know, trying to work through a, a, a Hess's law type situation. So let's work through an example. Here we have um, the, uh, uh, an example of a reaction where you, you're given two reactions, as you can see at the top here. Uh, one of them is, and this is a little off here, so I'm going to move it here. Uh, the top reaction here is uh, NH3 going to half N2 and uh, 3 halves H2 and the delta H of that reaction is um, shown right here. I'm just going to delete this thing out here. Delta H is plus 46 kilojoules. Remember that's referring to per mole of reaction, right? Remember that concept we talked about earlier? Uh, and then the second reaction is 2H2 plus O2 forming 2H2O. Uh, delta H is negative 484 kilojoules per mole of reactions. And you're being asked to calculate delta H for this reaction. And this is what we refer to usually as a target reaction. So this is a reaction of interest. And you have to somehow manipulate these two in order to get you this reaction right here. Okay. Okay, so if you look at these reactions right here, this is the given and this is your target. Um, Hess's law is really pretty much, you know, sort of like balancing equation is a trial and error process. However, what you can always keep in mind is that you want to find uh, unique species if you can, just like uh, when you're doing balancing, you want to find unique species, which is basically a species that only exists in one of the reactions. That's really what I mean by a unique species. So if you look at the target reaction here, you notice that there are four species, N2, H2O, oxygen, and NH3. And uh, you notice that, for example, N2 uh, exists only in this reaction, reaction number one, but it doesn't exist in reaction number two. That makes it a good target to start with, okay? Another one, uh, if you look at this here, is H2O. Same thing, it's a reaction that, uh, it's a species that's uh, only in this reaction, but doesn't exist in anything else. So that's something you wanna, might, you know, consider starting with. Oxygen is the, also unique. Uh, NH3 is also unique. This is basically a, a fairly straightforward example of Hess's law because all of these components are unique. Uh, a lot of times in, in harder uh, or more difficult uh, problems of Hess's law, you'll see that some of the species given in the target is not exactly unique, in which case you have to think a little bit more about how to rearrange the uh, equations that are given to you. But in this case, it's fairly straightforward. So you find that you want 2 and 2 to be in your um, target reaction and you want that to be on the reactant side. If you look at this reaction, the only reaction that contains N2 is this first reaction right here. And I want the N2 to be on the uh, reactant side. So that means I have to reverse this reaction. That's the first thing I need to do is reverse uh, reaction one, right? And then uh, because if I reverse it, I still get only half N2 and I want two N2, I have to multiply that by four. 
okay so what that means of course is that uh, if if you know I would rewrite this equation the following way if I multiply and reverse this by uh, reverse and multiply by 4 what I get is 2 I'm just gonna write it here 2 and 2 plus um, 6 h2 forming uh, 4 and h3 right so that would be what happened if I were reverse and, and multiply by 4. Now, the second reaction, what do I need to do with it? Well, if you notice that the H2O uh, is only present in reaction 2, it's not present in reaction 1. So I could use that to determine what I need to do with reaction 2. Um, H2O, I want it to be on the reactant side, and I want 6 of it. Right now, I have the H2 on the product side, so I need to reverse reaction 2 as well. Okay, so here's step 2. Reverse reaction 2 and then because I want 6 I need to multiply this by 3 right and multiply by 3 okay so in other words uh, if I if I do that then I'm gonna get 6 H2O right I multiply this reaction reverse and multiply by 3 I'm gonna get 6 H2 and 3 O2 6 H2 and 3 O2 and what I want to do before I do any kind of uh, delta H calculation is I want to make sure that I actually get what I'm looking for before you start, you know, trying to multiply the delta H values. Because sometimes you might not get what you're looking for, in which case you need to rethink your strategy a little bit. But in this case, if you add everything together, you notice that uh, the 2N2 is going to be here. The H2O is also going to be here. And then you have H2, 6H2, but you also have that 6H2 appearing on this side, on the product side. In which, and so what that means is you have the same species on both sides. And if you remember back when we're doing net ionic equation, when we have that type of situation, they're basically, uh, they are canceled out because we consider them not to really participate in the reaction, right? So this is sort of like the same idea here. We're applying it here. Anytime you have the same species on both sides, they cancel. Uh, and in this case, they are they're the same number, so then all of it cancel out. So then what you're left with on the product side is just 4 NH3 plus uh, 3 oxygen, okay? And of course, if you look at this uh, reaction that I just wrote down here, it's exactly the target reaction that I'm looking for. So in other words, I get what I'm looking for, so then I can start... Uh, playing around with or calculating the actual value of delta H. So the first... Uh, manipulation I did is reverse reaction 1 and multiply by 4 uh, which means that if I want to calculate delta H of my target reaction then I have to take delta H1 which remember was plus 46 I'm going to multiply that by negative 4 okay right so that's going to be in units of kilojoules and then I'm going to add to that right uh, reaction 2 where again I reverse and multiply by 3 uh, for reaction 2, I have a delta H of negative 484. That's the original value. And I'm going to multiply in this case by negative 3 because uh, that's the manipulation I did here. Multiply by 3, reverse. Okay. And if I were to do both of these steps, um, I should be able to uh, add uh, both numbers up. And then what I get in the end is plus 1268 kilojoules as my answer okay so hopefully that illustrates to you how you can solve a Hess's law problem uh, using um, you know using uh, um, uh, this idea that you can manipulate different equations uh, what we're gonna do next is talk about this second concept very much related to Hess's law which is the enthalpy of formation and um, uh, you know, and then and then you'll see that you can use either Hess's law or enthalpy formation to make calculations of delta H.